Actually, this is going to be more... Uh, well, we'll talk about it. I mean, it's not just social engineering. It's open source intelligence. It's, um, it's a plethora of fun. Let's just say that. Bonjour, Quebec. Je m'appelle Shane McDougall. Uh, je suis un Canadien. And unfortunately, that's about all the French I remember. I'm embarrassed to say how much of my French vocabulary I've lost living in the States as long as I have. Sadly, there's not many French people down in San Diego. But uh, c'est dommage, allons-y, zut alors. That's about it, man. <laughs> I apologize. So that's it. Um, but I'm very, very, very proud uh, to be a Canadian. Sometimes I say that's my proudest accomplishment in life. Um, uh, and I'm very proud to be back here in Canada, and especially to be back in Quebec. I mean, some of my fondest memories from my youth are from here in Quebec. I actually kissed my first girl here in Quebec. Yes. <laughs> yes, thank you. I mean, it was my cousin, but still, I mean, it, that still counts, right? Uh, all right, so the talk is called uh, I Am Joe's Twitter Profile. It's really, you know, I Am Joe's social media profile. Um, but we are going to focus a lot of our, our talk today about um, image intelligence. So what is information we can grab from people's imagery? Uh, I'm, I'm a big time guy into uh, open source intelligence and harvesting data on people. I don't know if you've seen any of my talks at some of the other conferences. I wrote a program called Ceiling Cat that I presented at DerbyCon a few years ago. And that was a program that was designed to automate the blackmailing of people, which I don't recommend you do. It was just kind of an academic exercise. Um, but, you know, that was kind of a real eye-opener to people, just how much stuff people put online. And a lot of times that they don't even realize that they're, they're putting online that they really, really shouldn't. Uh, but it's Joe's Twitter profile, his Flickr profile, his whatever profile. Uh, a little bit about myself. I am Canadian. Uh, I live, I've lived in the U.S. for about 20 years now. Uh, I started my career, though, as a pen tester in Canada in 1989. Yeah, I know. I'm an old, old guy. Uh, and it's shocking and very uh, heartwarming to come back and see a conference like this now where we have hundreds and hundreds of people. I mean, literally when I started, you could fit everybody in Canada who was in computer security in this row. Um, so I'm very happy to see our community has grown. And that's about the attendance we have for this talk, too. Uh, I have co-founded a company called PACAC with Nadim Duba and also a cloud security company called Hexadium and I'm a principal partner with my main consulting firm that's still out of Nova Scotia called Tactical Intelligence. So this is an interactive session. Please take out your phones and you're not like every other one. Put your phone away, put your thing away. I mean, if, you can certainly follow along in the slides if you want to. But if you want to start hunting down information on this guy that we might target, feel free to play along and at the end I've got some awesome prizes like solid gold chocolate um, stuff like that uh, and we're you know it's 2015 we're all drones and slaves to these devices anyway so why not just use them okay rule number one we're gonna be looking at one person's profile and this is somebody I picked at random and I'll show you in a little bit how I picked them at random um, so please do not harass this person at least until this presentation's over, because we don't want everything going dark before the end of the conversation. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure that we'll get back to this guy uh, after a couple of the courses. I, I've taught several courses, OSINT courses around the world, and I've used this guy as one of my targets. And about a year ago, after one of my Black Hat courses, a lot of his stuff started going offline, right? He started stripping metadata off his photos and other sites he stopped posting on. So, you know, I'm pretty sure he's on to me a bit. Uh, he's still posting stuff that's helpful, though. Um, so if you could find it in your heart not to burn this guy, he's a really good case study. Uh, <laughs> if you are going to burn him, though, please do it gently and kindly, right? Just no, uh, no griefing of this guy. Uh, and it really, this guy, I really don't know him in any way whatsoever. I've never met the dude. I mean, I would know him if I passed him on the street, believe me. And you will, too, by the end of the session. Um, but yeah. So. So. Anybody remember Reader's Digest? Okay, young crowd. Let me go back. Anybody remember books? <laughs> right? Remember those things? Right. So when I was a kid, I know, way back in olden days, we had this thing called Reader's Digest, which was this magazine that came out every month. And they had this article, you know, there was a series of, you know, I am Joe's body. And so every month it would be some story written from the point of view of some organ, right? So I am Joe's adrenal gland, right? And it would be a story about his adrenal gland written from the POV of the adrenal gland. 
And of course, I'd be always waiting. Oh, something juicy this month, please. And I think the closest was, you know, I Am Joe's prostate came up one month and not nearly as glorious as you'd hope it would be. So this is kind of like, um, you know, we're going to be talking about this guy's life from the point of view of a social media account. We're just going to really look at him for the most part of what can we glean about his life from social media. So quick show of hands. How many people here have a personal social media account? Okay, cool. Um, why do you use your social media accounts? I mean, why do you have a social media account? What, what for? Jobs. For jobs? For that? Okay. Who else? Who else have one? Family? <laughs> Stalking. That's legit, right? So why do we have per social media accounts for the most part? It's, you know, to stay in touch with friends and family, right? Self-promotion. If you're an artist or you're just an egomaniacal SOB, and there seems to be a ton of them on Facebook, right? Uh, activism or politics, job hunting, absolutely, LinkedIn, stuff like that. Uh, business development, if you're a sales guy or whatever, or, you know, you'll see people on Facebook selling weight loss wraps or whatever, you know, whatever the scam of the month is you're selling. Um, education or news or sports, I'm a news junkie, so I have a Twitter account because I just want to see the news as it's happening, right, myself? And job related, right? If you're an InfoSec and you're not on Twitter, you are completely missing out. It's one of the best resources for real-time alerting and information. Um, so quick show of hands. How many people here also have a social media account for nothing other than hacking and information gathering? Oh, you lie. There's no way there's only four or five of you. Really? OK. Fraud and hacking. I mean, that, that's, you know, social media is just an amazing tool for harvesting information and also for uh, ripping people off. So this, social media has always really amazed me. So in 2011, there was a study that came out, and it showed that on average, 20% of users' followers were complete strangers. These are people they'd never met, wouldn't know if they hit them with the car right, no idea who these people were. 60% were acquaintances. Right, so people, yeah, I've met this guy at a couple of conferences, or he's a friend of a friend, but you don't really know him. Only 20% were actually people that they really, truly knew and would consider friends, 20%. So for every friend, a real legit friend that they had in their circle, they also had a complete stranger, someone they didn't, un didn't know in any way whatsoever. And the reasons that people gave for accepting complete strangers into their social media cycles was really interesting. Not wanting to be rude. 54%. <laughs> not wanting to be rude. Rude to who, right? This isn't like a social interaction either where some person in the street, oh, you should add me, right? You should just add me. And you're, you're looking them in the face and their eager face. And, well, I can't, right? This is some anonymous stranger pinging you, some email request or some rando online hitting you. Oh, I don't want to be rude. That's crazy, right? 34% wanted to look more popular than they are. They want to boost, you know, I'm more popular than I really am, which is kind of sad, right? <laughs> but anyway. So, okay, that's bizarre. The show slide is showing up on my thing, but not there. Okay. Um, so, I like to use what's called open source intelligence for a lot of my work. And open source intelligence, everybody know what that is? That's where we grab information from um, openly available sources, right? And the whole point of an OSINT attack is not just to be able to break in, right? I mean, that you can grab information from those source of attacks. That's great. But a, a good use of OSINT is to help maximize the efficiency of your attack, be it a kinetic attack or, or a virtual attack, right? Reduce the amount of noise that we need to create getting in. Right. So if we're doing a password hacking, a password cracking uh, sort of exercise, we want to see, well, what's the sort of stuff that this guy would put into his passwords? Right. What the hell is going on here? Okay. This is bizarre. Okay. So let's look at a few things that we would look, be looking for. If we're an investigator, we might be, if you're looking for a suspect, you'd be looking for things like, Addresses, right? Email addresses, aliases or usernames that they use online, websites they've visited, things that they've posted online or for forums. Who are their associates? What are some photographs they might put? Where's their current location? What are their favorite locations? 
Uh, who's their employer? What software or hardware or security software are they running? What's some of their past internet activity? And, you know, and evidence of the crime, right? So if you're an insurance investigator and you see this guy is like cliff diving, right? And he says he's got a bad back, he could be lying. More to, uh, applicable to us, if we're doing social engineering or a pen test, we're going to be looking for stuff like information about physical plant, right? So layout of the plant, information about the security systems there, photos of the facility. We might be wanting to look for lingo, internal lingo or codes that they use, network diagrams or software hardware specifics, areas of interest for this person, like hobbies, um, dumpster or janitorial services might be something we look for, or vendors. Um, pictures or badges of uniforms, uh, information on employee satisfaction, because that's always good to know. If we know that em uh, employees at a place aren't happy, they're probably going to be more easily exploitable or flipped to do what we want them to do. Uh, building layout, do they have on-site security guards, stuff like that. If we're doing knowledge-based authentication cracking, right? What are, what are often things that we see those questions used, right? Pet's name, your date of birth, your significant other, or relatives' names, hobbies, their place of birth, your middle name, your favorite food, where you're married, previous addresses. These are all things that I grabbed from a survey of a bunch of different KBA systems, right? Your mother's maiden name, that's a big one. So let's get this party started, okay? So from this point on, feel free to follow along on your phone and start hunting down this guy if you want, or your laptop as well. Right? Uh, and find the most scintillating things you can. And at the end, like I said, we've got some prizes we'll give out to whoever comes up with some really cool esoteric information. So how did I pick this guy? I literally was sitting around, I was like, you know, I need to pick some company to do this on. And I was like, well, do I pick like IBM? Do I pick, I don't know, I just got to pick some random company. So hey, you know what? Hey, someRandomCompany.com. And lo and behold, a guy's blog came up. So if you want to go to blog.someRandomCompany.com, you'll find a blog, surprisingly. Uh, and I did a real quick who is on it, and I found out this guy's name is Eric Pitty. So that's who you're going to be hunting down today. He's not in the room, is he? Eric, are you here? OK, just want to make sure. Uh, so right off the bat, we have an email address, epitty at gmail.com. So let's add that to the list. And we have a phone number. So let's add that to the list. So real, real quick, and we're, before we go into social media, we're just going to do a real baseline because we want to make sure we know just who this person is that we're hunting down. Because if there's like a Joe Johnson or whatever, there's going to be a lot of Joe Johnsons. So really quick, I plop Eric's name into one of the random people finders, and we find out that this guy is a network systems tech at a San Diego school. His previous job shows us that he worked as a director of finance for a California mortgage company, and he's worked at a company called Airy Jones. And this thing also says that he's 34 years old. Okay, and there's a picture of him. So I Googled that address that came up, and I see what we get. And lo and behold, we get a hit from findabusiness.com and L Yellow Pages. We examine that entry, and bingo, bango, we get another email address. This one is chicote at earthling.net. So that's probably going to be another username he uses, right? Chicote. So we'll put that onto the list. So the problem is Chicote is kind of a common username, right? Apparent, and it's a, from Star Trek one, Voyager. Okay. Uh, so there's probably going to be a lot of Star Trek fans that might be using that name. So that makes it a bit more problematic, right? Obviously, we're looking for uniqueness. Uniqueness in our data set always makes life a lot easier. But we also find out he runs a company. Um, and the weird thing about this, too, is you'll you see that there's like an NAICS code. I, I still haven't figured this one out. The NA, uh, NAICS code of 621112 actually correlates to psychiatric care. So I have no idea what that's about. I mean, I know you have to be crazy to work in IT, so I think he's just cutting out the middleman. That was the closest I could figure out what's going on. All right. And we find out he, we Google Eric Pitty Spring Valley. We also get another company that he's involved with, 619 Enterprises, Inc. And I go to the 619enterprises.com. And we find out it's a screen printing business that Eric runs with an Ivan Pitty. So we've got a relative's name, Ivan Pitty. We'll figure out who he is. That's a new name for the pile we put in. I go to Yellow Pages, and I start to search the address, and I look at White Pages, and it says that he knows a Nicholas Pity. And notice Nicholas doesn't have an H in it, so that's nice. That's kind of a, a more obscure spelling of the name. And uniqueness, again, as I was saying, 
gives us a nice data point. So a quick thing to notice, so notice here it says that his age is 35 to 39, and in the other one it said 34. That is usually an indicator that they're in your current month. Their birth date is in the current month, and they haven't been able to either get the exact date or uh, within that month, but we're pretty sure his birthday is in November. Okay. And I'll do a real quick check on Nicholas Pitty, his dad, and if anything pops up, and lo and behold, look at that. People pick Nicholas might know is an Eric I. Pitty. So what do we know now? His middle initial, right? Starts with an I. Middle initials are golden, as you know, when you're doing OSIN hits, right? Because the more uniqueness. So some of you, want, you might want to start digging and find out what that I stands for, because we'll come to that in a few minutes. Okay, and I do a real quick Spokio. It says he was born November 1980, so that confirms what we saw earlier. He's got a sister and a father in Spokio, a Bianca and Nicholas. And we do more digging on a previous address, and it comes up that he was from Redmond. Uh, and there's uh, a, a, another woman that comes up, Reg Regina, who's in her late 60s. So I'm assuming that's his mother, or he has a much older girlfriend. Uh, I do a bit of digging. I pull up his brother, Ivan, who we found earlier, co-runs his company, 619 Enterprises. Then I pull up really quickly his birth record online, and I see his mother's maiden name is Gismondi. And using that, we can confirm that the other people we found online are indeed his siblings, because they have the same mother's maiden name. And then we're getting towards the end here, so we run Eric Pitty through Google, see what comes up, bing, bang, boom, we get an address from California government's lost money effort. Uh, and this is, I notice he's just a couple miles from where I live, so if I want to actually validate if this is his current address, I can just haul my ass over to his house and Wait, right? And the, oop, the, um, the Redmond link is him too, sorry. Uh, if you notice there, they didn't tell us. Uh, anyone want to guess where he worked at in Redmond? Microsoft, that's good. Which, by the way, doesn't show up on his LinkedIn profile, so we might have some questions there. All right, and we click the link in this California government lost proceeds page where they've been trying to reunite people with assets that have been classified as abandoned. So here we see he has $62.37 from San Diego Trust and Savings Bank. So here we could do one of two things. We can social engineer Eric, or we can social engineer the bank, right? We have two, two new ways in. So real quick, we've done some really basic recon just to make sure we know exactly who this person is and that the people, the person that we're going to hunt on uh, social media is indeed this guy. But I mean, that didn't really take us long. Um, and we've got kind of a baseline about him. So we know where he's lived, where he's worked, his family tree, and so on. We haven't really touched his social media accounts, which is really what this talks about. So, But we can build up a pretty good profile, but it's kind of plain Jane, very vanilla, right? So no more messing about. Let's actually go to his blog, somerandomcompany.com, and check out what we find there. So on his About Me page, is everybody on his About Me page? Everybody, whoever's there, whoever wants to follow. If you go to his About Me page, what we see is that it's a blog. It's run by a guy named Eric Pitty, which, again, he's getting a K for Eric, which makes it much nicer for us to, you know, more unique to, to search on. Um, he, and I do a perform, yeah, I already mentioned, right? Doing, performing OSINT searches on unique names is always a lot easier, right? If you're doing Dave Johnson, Right? That's a nightmare to search, do OSINT searches on Dave Johnson. Is there a Dave Johnson in the room, by the way? There's got to be. There's always a Dave Johnson in the room. Uh, so what does Eric have to say about himself? He says, I spend my days as an IT systems engineer for one of the largest urban school districts in California. I'm currently working on rolling out tens of thousands of netbooks running Windows 7 for student use. Good to know, right? So now we know what state he's in, we know we did this for a living, and chances are we can pop this guy's workplace with a Windows 7 exploit. So let's explore a bit more about this guy's blog. And we see, you know, he's giving us a lot of information about tech he was using in past gigs, but then we see he's just posted something fairly recently. He's still around, and lo and behold, he's giving us a lot of information about the the infrastructure that he's working with, right? So he's using Microsoft System Center configuration, Manager 2012. He's using uh, Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. I mean, he goes down the entire list of how they roll out patches, the different software, the mail server, everything, right? So this is good information to know if you happen to be hacking the school district, which, by the way, we are not going to do, correct? <laughs> 
Right. I got my eye on you, man. I don't trust <laughs> Right, let's go back to his About Me page. So we see several links to other social media sites, right? We see a Facebook, LinkedIn, a F a Flickr, Twitter. I think that's a last FM. If somebody even uses that. Uh, YouTube and also a Experts Exchange thing. So let's click those and see what we can find. So we go to his Facebook page. Now, what do we see? Uh, I, we have a fairly recent pic from about a month ago. He says, if you go down a bit on his Facebook page, he says that he's a Pandora user. And he says, I think Scott will like this. And he sends a link on Pandora. So that's good. We know he has a friend, Scott. He uses Pandora. We also see that he has a, Fred, a friend, Chad Wilson, who's a high school teacher that's into robotics and Comic-Con. And we know he is into Comic-Con as well. You'll see that in a bit. And he has six followers, two of which are me. <laughs> I know. Um, he's actually running above the average, 33%, right? Uh, and a Vince Pity, who I'm going to assume is a relative. So we move on to his social media, the next social media link, which is his LinkedIn file, his LinkedIn profile. And again, you know, that's fairly plain Jane. So we look at what he's doing, and he's really given up the goods in the San Diego School District, right? Um, tons and tons of information here and on other places on the web about their infrastructure. And what we find is that Airy Jones does a lot of consulting for schools. They put in school system software and stuff. So anyone want to bet that he's still doing work on these school systems? I think it would be a safe bet. But wait, there's more. You page down and order more Eric Pity now, and he'll throw SDUSD under the bus even more with more data about their network. Right? Tons and tons of information about their infrastructure. And then we do a quick link on the Ari Jones company or on LinkedIn, and it gives us a bunch of other targets that we could go after if you, to either harvest information for OSINT or social engineering or find out exactly what school Eric is currently at. All right, we go to his MySpace page, um, and we do that by checking out Chicote at earthling.net and also uh, Eric or epity at Gmail, right? His two emails that he came up with. And his MySpace account comes up. Unfortunately, it was really good. Unfortunately, it kind of went dark a while back during my post-Black Hat period where, where he locked everything down in the period I refer to as the darkening. <sighs> but still, there's a potential lead there. He uses the username ericnsd up top. So that's yet another username we throw into the pile and then run through our um, searches. Another social media site he uses is Instagram, where he is the user Eric PT. Uh, a couple interesting recent uh, uh, photos that he's put up are the first, where he mentions and shows pictures of uh, Dell Latitude 12 ruggeds that he's using. Is anybody here actually hunting this guy down while I'm talking? Are we? Am I going to get to eat all year? Oh, okay, a few. Okay, good. Uh, we'll see how this comes. Up. Uh, so he talks about how he's using Dell, rug, uh, Dell 12 ruggeds. But this also, this other picture kind of caught my eye. And he's talking about how he's replacing a servo head on one of his silk screening company. Um, he actually mentions the brand and the model of the presses, which can be very helpful for phishing or social engineering, right? Um, anything else? Anybody that's looking at his Instagram? What can we glean from his Instagram? Just the first couple pages real quick. Anybody looking? What? He's got a new username, but just from, just from looking at the pictures in his Instagram, what can you tell me? You have to actually be on, so you're not going to grab it from there. Is anybody doing this at all? If I gone deaf, what's going on? Huh? Is it Dell World? Hmm? He likes traveling. Anything else he likes? All right, well, keep digging. There's other stuff. We'll see. Um, we look for user Chicote on YouTube, and sure enough, there he is. Uh, he has a page there. He hasn't posted anything in three years. Uh, up in the upper right-hand corner, we see a link to his Google Plus profile and his Twitter account. His username is Eric PT, so we add that again. And on his Google Plus page, we can see known associates who have him in their circles and some more information about his tech stuff. He recently blogged about putting WordPress on an IIS server hosted by one in one So again, more information we can use for social engineering and phishing. Right? We saw on his blog that he's in, in Experts Exchange. And a quick glance shows that he was very active there, but he stopped a couple years ago, which kind of sucks. Because this as a forum is fantastic if you want to find out what tech people are using. I mean, the information that this site bleeds is unbelievable. 
All right, next we pick up his Twitter profile. So if you want, he's Eric with a K, PT on Twitter. So if you want to go to his Twitter site. Um, he's not super active, but he's active enough. And just a quick glance about his recent activity, and you can glean a few things about him. Anybody got his Twitter page up? Well, what? He likes rock music. What else? Come on, folks. Are you guys all hung over? I'm sorry. Flight numbers? OK, stuff like that. But what about his activity? Can you glean anything from that? Sorry? He does. He absolutely does. Yeah, November 21st, right? So, all right. Um, if you look, though, you'll see things like he uses Uber. He is a Sirius XM subscriber, which we can use as possible phishing uh, or attack vectors. He uses he used to use Foursquare. He stopped again after Black Hat in the darkening, son of a gun, which is really sucky because Foursquare, again, allows you to do real-time geolocation tracking of people. Although he still does post things real-time, right? When he's at the airport or when he's eating and stuff, he'll tweet pictures of, here's what I'm eating, here's where I'm at. So you can actually do near real-time or real-time tracking of this guy as he moves around. And my mouse has disappeared. Where the hell? Did it hang on me? All right, there we go. Um, but you'll notice that you say he's a, he's a, he posts a lot about travel. You'll actually start to see he tweets a lot of stuff about airports, too. So he's a possible aviation buff. Uh, if we check, he has a list that's called coworkers. It's not populated not yet, but that's something we're definitely going to want to watch. Um, and then if we actually go through his Twitter profile, we see that he, there's a list of videos and photos that he's taken. So if we browse through that, we see this one. This one says Pegasus uh, CCK is totally fedorable. Right? So we know that this is someone that he's gone to a ball game with, and it's user Pegasus CCK. And we really we click on her profile, and we see that her name is Carrie K. So we know that this is a good friend of his, possible girlfriend, possible good friend. That's something. It is what? Right, my heart is on Twitter. So this is his girlfriend, right? So now we know who his girlfriend is. Um, what can we? Here's a quick question for you. What can we glean from from Pegasus? Her name is Carrie K, right? Carrie K. What can we glean from her username Pegasus CCK? Her middle initial is C, right? Which again helps us when we're doing OSINT searching, right? Middle initials are golden. All right. So next up is this Flickr page. This is what I grabbed last night on my phone. So I screenshot it, so we can see here. He uses the username E Pity. So we add that to the e Intel list. And again, it's amazing the sort of information about a person you can gather just from their photo stream. And I really would recommend if you you know you pick up the photo stream, his Flickr stream, and start looking at it because I'm that's really where we're going to be spending the rest of this talk on. So I'd like you to take a couple minutes and tell me what you can tell about Eric from just the first one or two pages of his Flickr profile. And his username is epitty, E-P-I-T-T-I. -I. I don't see near enough phones out, man. This is <laughs> not too many lectures. Say, I want you to be texting throughout my time. OK. Well, the first, thing, the first thing you can tell is he likes food. I mean, he puts food, snapshots of food all through his picture, all through his, all through his Flickr uh, feed. Um, Everything from In-N-Out Burger to uh, Southern Fried Cooking to, I mean, you know, and he's a fairly big guy, so yeah, he probably likes food, right? But this picture was of interest to me. And it's taken at San Francisco Airport, and the caption reads, How to make a Boeing Company 747 look small? Park it next to an Airbus A380. Quick question, quick show of hands here. How many people here know the difference between an Airbus A380 and a Boeing 747? Right. Would you consider yourselves aviation buffs? No? OK. Bubba? Could be. I got no idea. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. 
But a little bit later in his Flickr stream, we also see this picture with a description, looking out at a Boeing 747 in British Airways livery. Anybody know what livery means? Uh, what, what airline livery means? The skin of the airplane, right. Okay. Not many people know that. Right? A lot of people think a livery is where, you know, like a garage or something, but to actually know the lingo, and as you look through his Flickr profile, you'll see there's a ton of stuff about airplanes and the models and that sort of stuff. So this guy is definitely an aviation buff. So we can add that to our Intel list and send him a phishing or social engineering campaign related to the airlines that he flies, because he always tweets them, or cheap tickets, or new airplane news, or what have you, right? Stuff that we could certainly exploit. We also know he's a photographer because he has 4,400 plus photos on his Flickr stream. That's not something that the casual user does, right? But as we go through, we also see that he took a lighting course in photography. So that's good to know. His hobby is photography. And in fact, a lot of his work has appeared online. Uh, he did his, his, he's been in everything from Wired to uh, national newspapers and stuff like that. Uh, we know he shoots with Canon lenses. I knew there was something about him that I liked. And that's, again, something we can use for a phishing campaign. We know that he knows sign language. We know that he uses Amazon because he ordered this book from there. We know he has a German Shepherd, and we know that that German Shepherd name is Roman. And we can start to develop his circle of friends. So he has a, a, sub, a subfolder of photos called NB slash CK apartment load in day one. Now, first off, if Eric is helping somebody move in, those people are either blood relatives or very good friends because you don't help strangers move. I don't even help blood relatives move, right? I mean, if there's not a gun in my head, you're on your own, brother. But we can see that this person lives at apartment 35A. Finding the list of addresses in the city with apartment 35A is actually really trivial. If you have something like access to Melissa data, has anybody here worked with Melissa data? Really? Great resource if you're doing OSIN uh, searches. It's basically a list of every uh, legitimate mailing address in the country. And if you can't get access to Melissa Day, you can go to your city. And usually the city planning or licensing would tell you how many places have 35 units or above. Yeah? I'm not sure if Melissa Data works. In the yeah, they might not work for here. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you get Canada 411, or I mean, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things. But lo and behold, we see this girl. Well, remember, we saw her earlier, and the, the subtext says, hey, Carrie. A Carrie in the wild appears. So we know that this is Carrie K. So that's the CK and the CKNB. Here's a picture of her roommate MB, and we actually see NB in Eric's Flickr profile. So with a big bit of digging, you can actually find out where who these people are, where they live. They're not really at the point of our conversation, but again, if you're just starting to find all the information about associates and stuff, very easy to do. And then on his Flickr profile, he puts up his business card. So this certainly helps us a bit, right? We got a cell phone, a work email address, a work phone fax address. That's pretty nice to know. And then he posts this. What can we tell from this Flickr pic? Uses AT and T, right? You get a you get a candy, my friend. Who said that? Oh, God! Uh, I'm good enough for the expos. All right. Um, you're not diabetic, right? Okay. <laughs> and we also tell he has sucky battery life because it's only what 3:32 in the afternoon. He's down to 22 percent, so he's probably using an iPhone. All right. So we have a cell phone number. Let's see if that meshes up with AT&T. So we pull that and run it through this lookup site, and it shows that, sure enough, it's probably a work or personal phone number that he's using. Now, this one's interesting. This is something they put in his Flickr account. And the text under it was fail. Eventful's a little too helpful with email address correction. He says, this is not my real email address, but er at earthling.net is the correct domain name. So if we hadn't already found out the earthling.net, he already, just from his Flickr account, right, would have tipped us off that that's where we need to look. But his next post is even more helpful. Then he says, the, ev the eventful fails keep coming, this time with my real email address, fail. So again, if we hadn't done any of the baseline 
hunting that we did before we went to his social media account, we'd still be able to find out that his email is epity at gmail.com, right? And then he posts pictures of work-related hardware, including specific hardware like wireless adapters and the models that he's using. That could definitely be helpful. Then he has this. Then he has pictures of work that he's doing at asset scanning at the school he works at. And in this one, we see some really helpful information. <laughs> right, that's right. So we see that he's working at Bird Rock Elementary School. So somebody want to Google Bird Rock Elementary School and see what school district that's in? Slowest Google search ever. The suspense is killing me. Nobody, come on. San Diego Unified School District. So he is, as I reported earlier, uh, San Diego School District. And he's using the Ari Jones Asset Scanning Program. And we can see the school's code is 0029A. That's an internal sensitive thing. Also useful information is the IP address written on the printer up in the top, 10.40.17.252. Again, folks, please do not hack this school. <laughs> Here's another innocuous picture of Eric doing an asset survey. By the way, I don't know if you noticed, but there's a picture of a map of the layout of the facility. And if you go through his uh, Flickr profile, you'll see that there are many other layouts and maps that are absolutely visible throughout what he's doing. And this one, you know, at first it was like, ah, oh, this is kind of use useless. But if you actually export the high-res version and then crop it in Photoshop and then run a high-pass filter on the photo, guess what? You can start to read text. So what you can glean is that that bunch of laptops in the floor they're scanning are actually Lenovo E10s. And one of them actually has an asset tag ending in 78412. So anybody here think they might be able to do a good social engineering attack just with that little bit of information? I know I sure as hell could. Guarantee I could. This one I love. This is my favorite picture of all of them. I don't know if you notice that, but there's actually a tag to attach to that basket. Can you see what it actually says? The school literally keeps its passwords in a basket. You may shoot me now. I've never heard of a basket of passwords, but now you can say you've seen it for yourself. I swear to God. Huh? <laughs> All right, so what we've seen so far has been pretty crazy, right? I mean, there's been a lot of kind of bad information out there. I want to show you a little bit more, but I'm giving you a heads up. Some of these are probably going to melt your brain, okay? So he starts posting network diagrams for the schools. <laughs> yeah, I swear I don't know this guy. Uh, so this is data center one, as you can see. This is data center two. <laughs> so we can glean that data center two has more functionality than data center one does, right? Yeah, ASA firewalls, we can see that they have a, I can't even read, 7K and a 70, right, I mean, you, the ASA is everything. Yeah, the whole stack is basically everything is there for these guys. Again, please don't hack these guys. And just in case you missed the big picture, he, he said, you know what, let me just, let me give you a wide view angle of that. Do you want me to keep this up for a bit while you take notes? <laughs> We're not hacking the school, that's totally. But this is totally stuff that you should put up for the public to see, right? Oh, yes, he did. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, this is the school number for the school's DSL line. He's got the tech support line. Um, so let's zoom in. <laughs> so, yeah, you saw that correctly. That's the wireless SSID and the network key and the tech support number. Can someone envision in some remote possible way that hypothetically someone could maybe do something slightly bad with this information? Anybody? 
I mean, maybe if we put a team of us together, we might be able to come up with some way we could exploit this in some bit. <laughs> and this was taken last March, right? So this is still pretty fresh. I mean, I... So you'd think that this guy is just some civilian, right? Um, no, he's actually been to HOPE, to the HOPE conference in New York twice. Uh, oh, yeah, and he's been to DevCon twice. Uh, DEF CON 16 and 17, and in fact, here you can see him posing with the Hack 5 crew back when they still had a glimmer of life left in their eyes. Yes. And in fact, the MoFo even got into a ninja party. Okay, this is what pisses me off the most. <laughs> yeah, he's... So, so remember when we were back at the beginning, we said, what are the list of things we'd be looking for if we wanted to do a pen test or an assessment or stuff like that, right? So if you're an investigator, what did we get? Well, his home address, yeah. Email address, yep. Aliases, yep. Websites visited and blog posts, yep. Associates, yep. Photographs, oh hell yes. <laughs> Current location, yes. Favorite locations, yes. Employer, yes. Software, hardware, network diagrams, oh yes. Internet activity, yes. Hobbies and interests, yes. Political leaning, um, oh shit, I, I'm going to say no on this, but that's actually yes. I, put, I realized I just forgot to put the slides in. Okay, quick, if you want to find this political leaning while there's still time, if you're home. And evidence of the crime. I said no, but this is kind of a crime, at least on a... <laughs> All right, for social engineering or a pen test, right? We were looking for physical plant information, layout, photos of the facility, hell yes. Internal lingo and codes, oh yes. We got asset tags, school IDs, that sort of thing. Network diagrams, yes, yes, yes. Software hardware specifics, yes, yes, yes. Areas of interest, yep. Vendors, yeah, well, we know Ari Jones. Sorry, who's Skyping me in the middle of my talk. Um, Pictures of badges and uniforms. Well, we know that the Airy Jones people don't wear a, a uniform at work. So, yes, we have found that. And identifiers. Um, no information on employee satisfaction. We didn't get that. Uh, On-site security guards, camera surveillance. We didn't get that. But, again, we did have uh, photos of the facility, but not enough to. Uh, apps are using, yes. And system security is in place, yes. And for knowledge-based authentication, what did we find? Pretty much everything, right? His pet name, DOB. By the way, did you notice his date of birth? What was his date of birth? Keep looking. What, what? Yeah. It's actually today, I believe. Isn't it November 7th? I might be wrong. We'll go back and look at the end here. Uh, but his, his middle name, we found his middle name. We found his place of birth. We found his favorite food, where he was married. Well, he hasn't been married yet, so eh. Previous addresses, previous employers, yes. List of schools, no. Mother maiden name, yes. So with all this information, do you think we could do a little damage? Yeah, I think we could. Yeah. All right, so real quick bonus question. What apps am I running on my phone? Well, I'm not running Instagram on my phone. No. Ah, you weren't paying attention. You guys suck. I showed you that I took a screenshot the other day of his Flickr account, right? So you can see on the top of my thing that I'm running Evernote and all these other things. Please don't hack me. But this is the sort of thing you want to train your brain to notice, right? When people put up screenshots and stuff, right? You're giving out intelligence about your operating system. You're giving out intelligence about sites that you use. And this is all very helpful when you're building up profiles of people. All right, if you want to contact me, you can get me on, on the Twitterverses. I'm a big Twitterer at Tactical Intel, or you can email me, shane at tacticalintelligence.org. Um, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I would like to find out, so who here found out something that we didn't cover that they think is interesting? What? I have no idea. I either confirm nor deny. <laughs> really? You guys didn't? Oh, I'm eating these chocolate coins myself. Is that it? All right. It, it, are there any questions? Going once. Deux. Trois. Au revoir. Thank you very much for showing. <laughs>